A great advantage for patients with stage 3 locally advanced unresectable NSCLC progressing despite concurrent chemoradiation therapy was demonstrated by the Pacific trial, a global phase 3 study assessing the efficacy of the anti pdl one devalumab. Commenting on these results, Rafael Zyadziusko from the Medical University of Gdansk reveals how immunotherapy is shaping the landscape in advanced lung cancer. This is the trial that has long been awaited in this population of patients. With radical treatment, improvement in progression-free survival is very meaningful and means that uh, probably many of those patients will have a huge benefit from the treatment. However, for the full evaluation, we still await for overall survival data. It's important to know that the field of treatment of patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer with combination of local therapies, chemoradiation, and systemic therapies, durvalumab in this case, has not been improved over last decade. So this is the first trial that demonstrates uh, what is a very promising uh, advantage for the patients. We are challenging how to treat patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer from year to year more. With the results of the clinical study with pembrolizumab in patients with pdl one positive tumors that showed advantage in terms of overall survival for immunotherapy, we are changing the paradigm how to treat patients with first-line immunotherapy in advanced non-small cell lung cancer. However, it should be noted that only a small proportion of patients uh, have pdl one positive tumors. And also, the data from other trials are awaited to see what is the impact of other testing methods, not only pdl one testing, but also perhaps other better uh, predictive markers for immunotherapy of non-small cell lung cancer. In this respect, we again heard quite a lot of studies regarding predictive uh, markers for immunotherapy, mainly in the second line setting, but also several ongoing trials will establish, probably establish immunotherapy in population of patients defined by different predictive markers. So this field is rapidly changing. I would say it's probably too early to say that we will definitely avoid chemotherapy in these patients. As certainly for many patients, chemotherapy is, appears to be a better option than immunotherapy. The ongoing battle is to exactly know who are the patients to be treated with immuno and who are the patients to be treated with chemotherapy and in what is the level of evidence in favor of this or that treatment. No benefits in adding weekly paclitaxel to chemotherapy in first-line treatment of ovarian cancer was shown by the ICON-8 trial presented at ESMO 2017 today. As Jonathan Lederman from the UCL Cancer Institute in London commented, these results are likely to dissolve any controversy that comes from conflicting outcomes reported by a Japanese study previously. The trial was a three-arm study comparing three weekly carboplatin and paclitaxel with the Japanese regimen of carboplatin given every three weeks and paclitaxel given weekly, and a third arm of weekly carboplatin and weekly paclitaxel. The results showed uh, that there was actually no difference in the progression-free survival of patients receiving weekly paclitaxel. So these data very much uh, went against the data that was shown by the Japanese study. However, they are in keeping with the two other trials that have been uh, conducted since the Japanese publication, namely the MITO-7 trial from Italy, which used weekly carboplatin and weekly paclitaxel, and indeed the GOG-262 trial that also compared the uh, Japanese regimen with three weekly uh, chemotherapy, although most of the patients in that trial had bevacizumab added in too. We now have three non-Japanese studies that have failed to show uh, in the first-line setting 
a benefit of adding weekly paclitaxel to, to chemotherapy. The main problem in ovarian cancer remains the problem of drug resistance and although patients may be treated uh, properly with surgery and given what we call optimum first-line treatment, 80% uh, of patients with ovarian cancer, advanced ovarian cancer, will have a recurrence and virtually all of those patients will die of their disease at some point. So I think we have to focus our attention obviously on improving the outcome of patients with recurrent ovarian cancer and prolonging their survival, but in order to try and cure more patients, we have to, I think, turn our attention to first-line treatment. So there are a number of first-line trials that are going on at the moment which have not yet been reported, uh, trying to improve the outcome of uh, this group of patients. Um, the first area is, of course, in patients with a BRCA mutation, where we know that PARP inhibitors uh, may well have an important role. And the SOLO1 trial of maintenance of laparib uh, has completed recruitment. Uh, this is patients with first-line treatment who are then randomized to maintenance of laparib or placebo. And that trial will report when sufficient events have uh, uh, accumulated. And then there are additional trials combining uh, a laparib with bevacizumab, so bevacizumab is commonly used in the first line uh, setting, and a French-led trial called the Paola 1 trial, again, has just fi finished recruiting, where patients at the end of chemotherapy have a laparib added into bevacizumab, and that trial will tell us whether or not a laparib improves the outcome in the first line setting, and that's for patients with or without uh, a BRCA mutation.